TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Two IDF commando officers were killed by friendly fire last night adjacent to an IDF military base in the Jordan Valley. The Israeli security agency Shin Bet in a joint counterintelligence operation uncovered a secret Iranian espionage network operating in Israel. Well, French Foreign Minister Le Drian voices concern over the slow progress of nuclear talks in Vienna. Russia's representative to the talks claims, in contrast, that the negotiations are moving forward. Two IDF commando officers were killed by friendly fire last night adjacent to an IDF military base in the Jordan Valley. The two officers, Major Itamar El Kharar and Major Ofek Aaron, were joined by another officer and a service member for a security patrol in search of a stolen night vision device. In parallel, without prior coordination, another commando officer left the base with the same aforementioned mission. Shortly thereafter, the group of officers misidentified their fellow officer and engaged in an exchange of fire, which resulted in the regrettable death of Itamar and Ofik. Meanwhile, IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, visited the site of the deadly incident and instructed to launch immediately an investigation that will be headed by Major General in Reserve Noam Tibon. In other news, it has been cleared for publication that at the culmination of a joint investigation of the Israeli security agency Shin Bet, Israel Police and the International Crime Investigation Unit, four Israeli women in their 40s and 50s have been indicted by the Jerusalem District Attorney's Office on severe charges of espionage. According to the investigation, a secret Iranian espionage network that recruited the four Israeli women aimed at performing various tasks inside the state of Israel. It should be noted that despite the fact that the women suspected that the men who recruited them was an Iranian intelligence operative, some of them maintained contact with him, agreed to perform various tasks which he asked of them for which they received monetary compensation. A senior Shin Bet official noted an evident increase in attempts by the Islamic Republic to recruit Israelis by means of social media. The official explained that the Iranians are using the internet extensively for recruitment purposes in order to gather information that could help Iran fight against Israel, have people carry out various tasks and even draw Israelis to travel abroad with the intention of harming them. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett congratulated those responsible for the successful counterintelligence operation, while further highlighting Tehran's robust efforts to sow discord and polarization within the Jewish state. אני מברך את אנשי שירות הביטחון הכללי ואת משטרת ישראל על מבצע מוצלח שסיכל פעילות טרור עוינת כנגד מדינת ישראל. מדינת ישראל מצויה במערכה מתמשכת מול איראן. הדברים ברורים. אנחנו מזהים מאמצים וניסיונות בלתי פוסקים של משמרות המהפכה האיראנים לגייס אזרחים ישראלים. ניסיונות אלו לא מסתכמים רק בתחום הביטחוני והמודיעיני, אלא מתרחבים גם למאמצי השפעה על אזרחי ישראל, על החברה הישראלית, לזריעת כיתוב ומחלוקת, לערעור של היציבות הפוליטית בישראל ולפגיעה באמון הציבור בשלטון. פרמייר בנט went on to caution Israelis not to fall into the trap of Iran's malicious deceit. אני קורא לאזרחי ישראל, גלו ערנות לניסיונות הללו. ייתכן שמי שעומד מאחורי המידע שאתם צורכים או משתפים ברשתות הם האיראנים. שלא יהיה ספק, ידה ארוכה של מערכת הביטחון תגיע לכל מי שינסה לפגוע בביטחון ישראל. 
Earlier today, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett held a phone conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin, during which the two leaders discussed a number of issues that, according to the Israeli leader's media advisor, primarily focused on matters of regional security and agreed to continue close cooperation in this area. Furthermore, Bennett and Putin discussed security challenges in the global arena and against the backdrop of nuclear talks in Vienna, the Prime Minister stressed the importance of a strong and determined stance against Iran's progress in the nuclear project. In other yet related news, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian asserted that despite making some progress in the nuclear negotiations taking place in Vienna, at the end of December, a revival of the 2015 deal remained far off. Speaking at a French parliamentary hearing, Le Drian further stressed that the ongoing discussions are too slow and that it creates a gap that jeopardizes the chance of finding a solution that respects the interests of all sides. The French top diplomat further stressed a vital urgency on this issue because of Iran's own actions and the trajectory of its nuclear program. In contrast to the sentiments of Foreign Minister Le Drian's remarks, which were echoed by other Western diplomats privy to the talks in Vienna, Russian ambassador to international organizations in the Austrian capital, Mikhail Ulyanov, tweeted after meeting with U.S. Special Envoy for Iran, Robert Malley, yesterday that the feeling is that the negotiations are moving forward. It is worth noting that Moscow has repeatedly blamed the United States for Iran's dangerous nuclear advances, as was reiterated by Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova during her last published briefing late last month. Одуматься, когда они в одностороннем порядке, в нарушение самими же американскими дипломатами выработанных методов и форм выхода из договоренности, из нее просто убежали. Нынешние коллеги в Вашингтоне уже не раз, я думаю, пожалели о фатальном решении предыдущей администрации разорвать ядерную сделку с Ираном. Ну, а мы же знаем, к чему приводит политика такого максимального давления. Результаты всегда хорошо известны заранее. Мы искренне надеемся и, кстати говоря, желаем, что наши американские партнеры, мы им желаем этого, не повторяли подобных ошибок в будущем на других треках. Zakharova went on to reject Western complaints about Iran seemingly stalling the diplomatic process in Vienna. Мы отмечаем, комментировали публично не раз обоюдный настрой участников переговоров в венском формате на скорейшее достижение результата. И, честно говоря, видели комментарии о том, что якобы Иран тормозит этот процесс. Нет, у нас подобной оценки нет событий. Нет, мы не видим причин утверждать, будто иранская сторона тормозит этот процесс. Да, собственно говоря, это и не в ее интересах, о чем Тегеран неоднократно заявлял, поскольку пока СВПД буксует, незаконные американские санкции продолжают действовать. The Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman went on to voice hope that a revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement would de-escalate tensions throughout the Middle East. И надеемся, что интенсивные переговорные усилия на венской площадке продолжатся, несмотря на противодействие оппонентов ядерной сделки. Мы, конечно, твердо исходим из того, что СВПД не имеет альтернативы. Убеждены, что его полноценное осуществление благоприятно скажется на политическом климате на Ближнем Востоке, в зоне Персидского залива и, конечно, будет способствовать снижению в регионе напряженности, укрепит доверие между странами региона. Turning to Washington, where U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price was asked about a statement made by a European representative to the talks in Vienna, who told the London-based Reuters news agency that he believed February 1st should be the final day to achieve some kind of agreement, and whether the United States agrees with this European assessment. 
you've heard from us that the runway uh, is short. Uh, the runway is very, very short. Uh, we are not talking about uh, a protracted period of time that remains. Uh, we are talking about potentially weeks, not months. Uh, second, it is impossible uh, for us, at least at this point, uh, to point out a date on the calendar and say that is the deadline. Uh, and it is impossible for a simple reason. Uh, you've heard me say before, this is not a temporal clock that is ticking down. Uh, it is a clock that is based on and a calendar that is based on technical assessments. And really what we are looking at here uh, is a very simple equation. When do the non-proliferation benefits afforded by the JCPOA as uh, finalized in 2015 and implemented in 2016, when are they overcome by the advancements that Iran has made in its nuclear program? Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you this evening to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Australia in prayer for its salvation and peace alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.